Next up, we have Brian Seleski from Argo AI. Come on up, Brian. One of the things that um, I, I mentioned in the, um, the article we, we posted yesterday is about um, the, the, the legal structure that, that you've set up with Argo, which I think is really interesting. Uh, but before then, I mean, you spent a lot of time at, at Google um, and, and probably know, you know a lot of the, the, the you know, core diaspora that, that's, left, uh, that's left there uh, and also the people who are, who are there. You say left, what? it's a it's a big team. <laughs> sure, yeah, it is a big team. Okay. No, that's totally right. true. Um, what you know, what what caused you to to leave and, and try to strike out on your own? And uh, you know, other than it's just an insane seller's market out there. Well, well, Pete and I started Argo AI with the idea that um, we really wanted to get uh, self-driving cars into the world and at scale. That's what it's about. Um, Carl was talking a lot using the S word, and we we completely agree. Um, it's all about, you know, the, the, when we talk about all of the advantages that self-driving cars have, um, that's only going to be accomplished if we can get it into the world and scale it out. And I believe, we believe, that in order to do that, the most of, one of the most effective ways to do that is to partner with um, an automaker. And so we set out and founded Argo with the intention of... Um, of raising money and, and looking to see if there's a way to raise money and also use that raise as a way to align us with an automaker. And we felt that Ford was um, particularly visionary. Bill had been talking about what was going to happen with mobility in cities and how cities will change in the future and how Ford wanted to be part of that equation. And so we felt that uh, there was a lot of alignment with what we thought would happen, and, and, and the, rest is, the rest is history. So the, the structure that you came up with was your idea? Uh, I think it was a team effort. You know, we approached them with an idea of how we might work together. That evolved through the through the um, through the negotiations, um, and what it resulted in is a structure where um, you know Ford invested a significant amount of capital into our company to sort of get us going. Um, and uh, you know, we're we've just crossed the hundred person mark. We're in three locations. We're in uh, Mountain View, Dearborn, and, and headquartered in Pittsburgh. How, how many are Ford people who've come into your group? Um, I don't remember the exact number, but uh, you know, we brought over the folks that made sense that we thought could really contribute at a, at a high level, and we've also been... The good hired. ones. Yes, the good point. But there's, 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 Ford had a very solid team. And then we, we also are hiring and bringing people in from all over industry and academia. Um, in terms of, I mean, you've been reading, you know, press articles about this space for, you know, more than a decade. I try not to read it too much. Try not, that's good. That's no. a good idea. Um, <laughs> what what bothers you the most about the discourse that that we have or have had, um, even within the the industry um, or, or, or you know among engineers? What what are kind of some of the things that that really bug you? Well, I think folks are 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 making it look like this is a solved problem or is going to be solved in the next you know year. The, 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 the bottom line is this is one of the most challenging problems in computer science, one of the most challenging problems in AI. Where, you know, the mother of all AI problems. Someone was as, quoted saying that this morning, I saw. That's center. right. Um, and, and we would tend to agree. And that's what makes it so exciting and so interesting. I mean, I don't know if we ever had a time where, where there was so much competition in a race to sort of change the world in such a meaningful way. It's pretty cool, right? And so there is a huge opportunity. And and uh, but it's going to take time, and it's going to take a lot of thoughtful consideration to make sure it gets done safely and responsibly. Yeah. So, are there any um, examples out there, prominent examples that that don't make sense to you? Uh, that uh, you know, efforts that you've seen come and go, or current efforts that that you know you just don't agree with? Uh, I, no, I I, I don't. Um, I think everybody has their own game that they're that they're playing, their own um, their own approach, and. You know, we'll see in a few years from now as to which ones are, are paying off. Um, you know, one of the things that's unique about um, our approach is I feel that the deal that we did with Ford is it allows us to have not only stable funding, but also um, a deep partner in, in making sure that the technology is applied to the vehicle in a, in a safe way and, and is done, done properly. You can't underestimate the complexity of what it takes to put a mini data center, tons of sensors, and all of this, you know, compute onto a vehicle platform, and to do that in such a way that um, it's going to work, it's going to be affordable, and it can be scaled up and brought to the world um, in a in a hopefully a pretty quick time frame. So we think partnering makes a lot of sense, and and um, that's sort of the approach Argo is taking. And, and the structure that you that you settled on is is supposed to give you some amount of independence and even the ability to work with other companies that are not named Ford or might be rivals to Ford. What, what are some things that Ford 
might ask you to do that you can push back on and say, nope, sorry, we're not going to do that? You know, we're responsible for um, we're responsible for delivering the systems, the hardware and software that drives the vehicle, and we own the point of view on how that needs to get done. I think Ford understands completely that um, telling us how to do that, why did you, you know, why did you invest in us, right? Um, so, so that's that's an area where we have a lot of independence, and and we do have independence from that. We have a board structure that allows us to. Uh, make decisions that are beneficial for Argo, um, and also uh, make sure that, with protections, that make sure that Ford um, has invested in a company that's going to ultimately deliver a, a virtual driver that can that can drive their vehicles and, and commercialize, you know, AVs on a, on a Ford platform. So I, you said everyone's playing their own game. What is your game? Uh, what can you tell us about your approach and what you're doing? And like, if I were a software engineer and you were recruiting me, what would you tell me? Well, you know, Carl, you asked Carl a question about um, sort of what is the most difficult part of building these systems, and I totally agree. It's it's in perception, what we call perception, so detecting the world and understanding it, and decision making. So using that information to safely navigate the vehicle. Um, he, he said he said decision making, so I'll say perception. Um, the, the the truth is there's no there's no wrong answer. Um, the the perception side is extremely challenging. It requires high resolution, long range data. Um, you know, we're a believer that it requires all different types of sensing, cameras, radar, and lidar. Um, if you try to solve the problem with just one of those, there are failure modes. You know, there are cameras that uh, have have issues with sun glare. They have issues with um, you know, depending on the dynamic range, with low light conditions and that sort of thing. Um, lidar, on the other hand, is a very complex instrument. Um, and, and uh, but gives you great 3D information that's very dense and at far and, and can be can see objects at far range. You have to combine these things together and create a total system solution. And so we're, I'd say the first thing I would say is we're creating a system solution to solving these perception problems. Right? There is no uh, religion or you know we must use only deep learning or we must only use these. You can't just you can't just solve this this huge problem and, and only deploy one of the tools in your toolbox. You have to use all the tools in the toolbox. Um, the other thing I would say is that um, to navigate the world safely, um, it, unless we have significant infrastructure changes that puts AVs sort of in a box from the rest of the world, it means that we're operating in dynamic cluttered environments. And in order to operate in dynamic cluttered environments, you need to uh, not only detect the things that are moving in the world, but we, have, we need to understand what are those things. Is it a pedestrian? Is it a cyclist? Um, is it a motorcycle splitting lanes? Scared the hell out of me yesterday, by the way. Um, and, and you have to detect all of those things, and you have to understand and have some sort of prediction in the future for what those objects are going to do. And it's about it's only then that you can start to adequate, uh, sufficiently predict what these objects will do that you can then navigate safely in and around those, those it, objects. And you're a little biased because you do come from a hardware and sensor background yourself, right? Well, I, uh, I've done a whole bunch of things. I started my career in software engineering and led the um, software engineering effort for the Urban Challenge uh, team at Carnegie Mellon. Um, and, and up to that point, I was people would have said, Brian's just a software guy. Okay. Um, and then when I went to Google, I had a great opportunity to lead the hardware development efforts. And, and um, I'm very thankful for that opportunity. And I learned an awful lot about the other side of the house. And so, so, I, don't, so I don't know what I am, Amir. What so, am I? So, <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm an engineer, if I'm like a perception or sensor fusion you know, uh, minded uh, engineer, yep. and I'm coming to you and I'm like, hey, I, you know, I got to pick between Waymo and, and Argo. How do you convince me to, to come work with you? Well, I leave it to the candidate. Um, wh where, where do they want to work? Where do they want to live? You know, uh, which strategy do they think makes the most sense? Um, look, you know, we, we are um, we're building a great company. We've got a, we've got an amazing team, and, uh, and you're hiring. You, hi you are hiring from like Waymo, Uber, other places like that, right? We hire from all over the industry and from universities. You bet. Okay. Um, so, in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, Ford, uh, obviously, they've, they've had a, a big change there with the CEO um, stepping down and a new one coming in. Uh, what can you tell us? Does that mean anything for you? Are you uh, were you pretty close to Jim? Have you had conversations since the you know since the change? And what have those conversations been like? Yeah, I mean, for Argo specifically, it's kind of business as usual. We're moving we're moving forward. Um, I would say that 
Uh, I have had a chance to meet Jim and, and get to know him over this past year. Um, he's an incredible guy. He sees the future. He's, uh, he's, in, a, he's in a great spot to sort of carry forward um, in, into sort of the future and, and to realize a lot of what, what Bill, I think, wants to accomplish. And, you know, we're excited to just be working so with him. So it doesn't make a difference necessarily. It doesn't, make, it, doesn't make a huge difference. No, I mean, we, you know, we've been, we've been in existence for, what is it, uh, eight months now or something. Um, we got a lot to do, so... And, and in terms of what you need to deliver, so you, by when, what's your, what's your deadline? When do you have to... <laughs> you said that very emphatically. Yeah. <laughs> deadline for what? Deadline, so you, <laughs> well, so the overarching goal for, for Ford is 2021, um, which, which yeah. uh, is, you know, other car companies have, have used that year too. Um, mm. What does that mean for when you have to deliver a solution, a hardware software solution, virtual driver solution to them that they can... Put in. Well, look, uh, Ford has talked about 2021 being their goal. It's important to have goals. We're supporting them in that in that endeavor for sure. What, what I would say, though, is um, going back to uh, the, the validation discussion yeah. and measuring performance discussion, it, it's ready when it's ready. You have to follow the data, right? Um, when the data and the metrics say that um, you know, we are um, at and exceeding the performance of a human driver in the locations that we're operating in, that's when... Um, you know, that starts to feed into, into the readiness equation. Um, when is it ready is the big question for all of us right now. No, to my knowledge, no one has pulled the human driver yet um, in any extensive pilot. Um, and, and I think everyone's looking at um, all the ways to test these systems and to build up confidence that, um, that, that they're ready before they do that. So if, if we skip to 2021, and I don't know when new models come out, do you... Do you know when they typically come out I, in the year? You know, I, I, I haven't learned okay. all the ropes, yeah. So if, if we're in 2021, what are the range of, what's like the range of solution that you could come up with? Like what's the like minimum that you're planning on in terms of capability, you know, geography, you know, what the actual solution will be versus like the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario, best case scenario for 2021 when I get into you know, a Ford Focus. You know, the beautiful thing is that in the U.S. alone, I think the statistic is three trillion miles driven in the U.S. alone per year. Think about that, per year. Um, uh, there are so many, so what I mean is there's so many different miles to go after. Which ones is a, is a big question mm -hmm. for us, and we're, we're having those active discussions um, looking into it. So okay. stay, stay tuned. I got to find another way to ask the same question. <laughs> um, no, just like high level. I really want to know, like high level, um, what do you think is, is deliverable? Like, are we talking about a solution that's only in a particular, you know, set of markets in just the United States? Or is the, like, what's the minimum requirement? So they've, you know, they're putting in $200 million a year. You know, you presumably have, like, a roadmap that, that you know, you're, you're talking to, to Jim and everyone else about. So what, what's the minimum, you know, viable product that, that you're supposed to ship? Like, how, how is it defined? Well, I, I think that's something that, that we're, we're discussing is, is what makes sense. And I, I think we've, we've all seen the, the opportunity that is in uh, cities today to move people. Um, there, there's obviously uh, a lot of opportunity even just beyond that, which is moving, um, which is moving goods. And, and we really anything from A to B, right? And, and uh, that's something that we look at all the time is what's the addressable market? Where do you think we can get share? And and we run those calculations, but I, I don't have anything to share with you today on the exact specifics of what we're going to do. Or when when it comes to the companies that so you so you can speak to anyone you want to um, in the industry, are there? I'm just curious. Like, uh, wouldn't a, another company that um, is a rival to Ford wouldn't they be a little nervous? Um, you know, having conversations with you, feeling like maybe you take that intel and pass it along to Ford, or are there kind of very strict guarantees and, and, and so on that, that you follow that would give other potential partners the, the kind of, um, would calm their nerves? Well, we're focused on, on delivering a Ford product into market with, with our technology okay. baked into it, and um, that provides a lot of focus for the team. And look, Ford produces something like six million cars a year. Like, we don't have any problem with scale, right? So, so what we need, we can, <laughs> we can, we can get into market. Um, and when it comes to talking to other partners, we'll do it as it makes sense. I mean, everybody has a different position in this space right now. There will be some who are uh, a little bit behind and maybe need to be caught up, and that's going to change the conversation. Um, but that's not something I'm worried about in, in the foreseeable future. 
So, so t tell me a little bit about the advantages, the, the title of this talk is Advantages and Disadvantages of Working with a Legacy OEM. Um, can you talk about some of, the, some of the real advantages that you're already seeing? You know, I think um, one thing to note about a car is it's made up of something like 30,000 different parts and uh, it's a tremendously huge supply base and really there's an engineer that owns every single part. And if you have to make a change or, or if, if something needs to be modified, that's an enormous team that needs to be interfaced to in order to do that properly, safely, to know that it's going to work reliably after you make the change, to know that you have a support network and a system that is able to distribute those parts in order to maintain the fleet and so on. It goes on and on. The, uh, the auto business, I have a, a whole new appreciation over the last several years for how complex it is. And so that machinery is all in place and ready, right? And, it, and, and that means that we have incredible focus to make sure that we deliver a virtual driver system. And, and combined, you know, that's what makes this so special. Do you feel like, um, do you feel like Silicon Valley or you know, the, the sort of software side of this, uh, of this industry appreciates that more than it used to? I think it's starting to. It depends on the, the players involved. Um, you know, I think the Silicon Valley versus Detroit meme that's been out in, you know, in the media the last couple of years I think is just wrong. They're, I think both sides are, are understanding the, the, the complexities. You know, if, I, if I look back to 10 years ago in the Urban Challenge when we were um, talking with various sponsors, um, it was pretty interesting because I think by and large, the car companies then really totally underestimated how difficult this problem was and how difficult it is to write software at this scale. And uh, you know, the conversations are completely different from 10 years ago. 10 years ago, Kristen Erbson and I, we would get laughed out of a room sometimes when we would talk about what needed to be done and what we were doing. And uh, you know, the conversations completely changed. And what, that's, what would you get laughed uh, oh, just, laughed Just about, about the concept of that we would do a completely autonomous vehicle with no human in the loop someday was... Who laughed at you? In, <laughs> <laughs> lots of people. C CEOs? <laughs> lots of folks within these companies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But right, I mean, it was, it was a thing that was not really, is this really going to happen? They weren't, yeah. they weren't sure. So what, what was the moment? What was, I mean, besides Google being the catalyst, is there any one particular moment in time that you remember going, oh, okay, they get it now? Well, I do think that... Um, you know, my time at Google, I saw where, yeah, eventually, the, I don't remember exactly when, but the light bulb clicked, right? Because um, they do have an impressive system. So I think... But was it I, like like the Cruise yeah. acquisition, for instance? Was it any acquisition or any kind of public statement? Was it Carlos at Nissan saying something? Like, what was the, what were some of the key... I mean, when, when, you, see, uh, when you see every OEM in the industry say, we're going to have a self-driving car by some date, I mean, that tells you something, right? Um, and, uh, regardless of whether they may or may but you not didn't have believe a strategy. Them. I don't know. I mean, everybody, every, like I said, everybody has a different position in the space as far as how hard they're going after it, right? And uh, I think some are okay with being maybe a fast follower. Some want to sure. be in the leading position. Um, but, but for sure, it, it was, the tone has completely changed over the last few years. So would you, would you quibble with Ford's position in our, in our um, uh, ranking and, and does it even matter if you're first to get to scale? You know, to be honest, I don't remember what the ranking was. I'm sorry. Oh, I think tied, I for, tied, for, <laughs> tied for 10th, but with a chance to tied move up. Tied for 10th? You put us at 10th? Okay. With a chance to move up <laughs> because of the talent that you're bringing in. Let's, let's, let's have a chat next year and see. And see let, let's, let's, look, let's get a couple more data, data points and then look at the trend. How's I, that? I can't wait. Okay. I can't wait. Me neither. <laughs> but does it matter who gets to scale first? Um, so, so again, I'll go back to three trillion miles driven in the U.S. alone. Yeah. Um, that's a huge amount of opportunity. There's for sure room for more than one player in this space. Yeah. That's why it's, it's sort of been hard for me to understand the mindset of, um, or the comments that, that people like uh, Travis at Uber have made, uh, or even Anthony Lewandowski, where it's like, winner take all, winner take all, winner take all. Um, that kind of like, you know, Google, Facebook, type mindset, um, that, that doesn't ring true to you then? I think we've moved past winner take all at this point. There's too many people in the field. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and when does it, uh, and we're getting c close to the end here, but, but um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, w Waymo in particular and, and some others ha have talked about um, the, the kind of crucial nature of, of LIDARs in particular, and we've got Velodyne here um, to, to give a talk about that later, but do you think, um, th does, that, does that make sense to you that, that it's, it's going to be 
um, you know, that, that inc improving performance on, on lidars. That lidars are kind of the end all be all. I mean, if you read the their, you know, their uh, their public comments about lidars, they make it seem like it's the most important thing. Um, Whose uh, public comments? Uh, Waymo's public comments. Okay. Um, uh, and, and John Kraftick talking about, um, you know, their their development and uh, the cost savings and, and so on. Do you do you sort of buy into that, uh, uh, or or do you think it's a it's kind of an area that's going to be a little bit more commoditized? Prices will come down. There will be a lot of players. Well, I think it's very early, um, which is weird that I'm saying this given that um, we put the first Velodyne 64 on a vehicle in 2006. Mm -hmm. But um, I, it is still early, um, and. And a lot of what's on the market today is just now starting to develop and push toward the requirements that are necessary to achieve fully self-driving cars, like at the level four or five um, uh, level of performance. Or even be automotive grade so that it can be on a car. And be automotive grade, exactly. So how it plays out, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. We're obviously keeping a keen eye on it. Um, at Argo, for sure, we see LiDAR as a, as a really important um, uh, aspect, and it's one ingredient of many that needs to go into a sensing approach to solve this um, in, in any you know any reasonable time frame. I'd have to, I'd kill myself if I didn't ask. Are you developing your own lidar? <laughs> you know we're looking at all options, um, but we're we're uh, 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 like I said, it's a, it's a, it's such an essential part to um, being able to detect and see the world in real time with the high resolution field of view that's that's necessary. Um, you know. That's, that's an important part of the equation. Okay. We have to get our hands on it. I'll take that as a maybe. Uh, questions for Brian? <laughs> yeah, please. Aside from LiDAR uh, in the sensor stack, mm -hmm. is there a sensor that, that you're most focused on or, or think the most advancement needs to take place in order to get to level four, level five? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, so in addition to LiDAR, wh where would we focus our, our time and what's most important? So so cameras is, 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 extremely, is extremely important, I think. Um, there's still a lot of ground to be made in uh, high resolution, really high dynamic range cameras that work really well in low light conditions that, um, uh, that um, you know, have a high frame rate, um, you know, <laughs> and there's always these, these debates over, all the, uh, over the, what the exact right specs are, but um, I still think there's a lot of development that can be done there, for sure. Uh, yeah, hey. Yeah, is, is Moore's, you know, Moore's law and all of those things, how, how important is that to sort of the future of this, this, whole, this whole thing? It's, it's essential. Um, I think a wise person once told me that um, you know, the difference between AI like 30 years ago and AI today is, is big data and incredible uh, processing power, right? So techniques that we in the past maybe couldn't deploy because you couldn't, you couldn't get those things to work in real time on a car. Um, uh, the compute you could stuff into a car. Um, you, you just you just couldn't you couldn't. It, it would be like, hey, that's nice. That's a nice research paper, but we can't field that. Um, that's completely changed now. Um, we can we can put things onto a vehicle and, and leverage um, just like what we see with deep nets. You know, the fundamentals of of deep nets that hasn't um, that's not anything entirely new. How these nets are structured and the way they're put together and the amount of um, data and processing power that we can devote to that algorithm is what's enabled it, right? And so I, I, see, I, see, it, uh, I see the, the continuing trend in, in you know, compute performance and, and performance per watt, that's super important. Uh, over in the, yeah, either one, go ahead. <laughs> So, so we, we believe consumers will have a choice. You can, you can allay any fears that your daughter yeah, don't may worry. have. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it, it, there, there, will be, there will be choice, right? I mean, here's, here's the bottom line, right? Driving in cities today kind of sucks, right? Um, there's a lot of congestion. Um, if you live in the city, it's really expensive to um, own, maintain, park your car. Um, and, and that's not going to change, and it's only going to get worse, right? The way to, the way to address that is through... Um, uh, things like ride sharing, and there's a lot of other ways to do it as well. Um, but but the, the, the way we're going to address those problems is not by putting more cars on the road, right? Um, uh, at the same time, um, I love to drive. Uh, so do many of my colleagues who are building self-driving vehicles. They want, uh, they love the thrill, but the idea is the thrill of the, of the ride. But, but at the same time, you know, they want to do that like not when they're commuting to work every morning in five mile an hour traffic. 
right? I'm sorry for <laughs> your experience. Yeah, I, I lived here for two years and I couldn't take it. So <laughs> you are a stronger individual than I am. <laughs> yes. Maybe the idea is, you know, her daughter's daughter will not even right. want to do it. Right? Yeah, it could be that, that, that I mean, I've, I hear it from some teenagers. They have zero interest, especially those that have grown up in, this, in an inner city. They, they have no interest in, in driving a vehicle. And um, I mean, I don't know. That's okay, too. Right. But the point is, there will be choice. All right. Come, come find him later. We're out of time. Uh, thank you very, very much for your time, Brian. Of course. Thank All you. Right.